Christopher Devine, and this is my review of Donner's Rising G Pro Carbon Fiber Acoustic Guitar. Carbon fiber is usually chosen for its stability. Uh, it can handle changes in environment and stress in a very wonderful way. And it kind of makes sense because of these properties to make an acoustic guitar out of this material. A few companies have done that in years past and it ends up being a very expensive and a very exclusive instrument. And Donner has actually found a very inexpensive and very unique way of applying it to this application with their Rising G Pro. It's got the high-tech materials, as you can see here, with a practical price. Uh, let's go through it right quickly. The, the cutaway body is very, very unique. It, they call it, Donner calls it a D-O barrel shape. Uh, it's a molded body with a uh, the neck's also molded in too, it looks like, uh, in a black uh, satin finish. And the top is also carbon fiber, but you can really see through the gloss finish in this. You can actually see the pattern of the weave of the carbon fiber, which we're usually used to seeing in things like aerospace industry and the automotive industry as well, too. Usually like hoods, fenders, and, and spoilers of, of race cars or even some street cars. Uh, have that high-tech look with this material. They usually show it off rather than hide it under paint because it's got a very unique uh, appearance to it. Now, what we can see on the underside is this is braced in an A configuration for strength, and that also allows for the top to resonate. Uh, Donner actually refers to their offset uh, parametric hole design that they've got here, their sound hole. Uh, they kind of... That's basically what they call it, a parametric sound hole system. And they're using it as a way of uh, projecting the sound of the player in a more efficient manner. That's the kind of way. Um, again, the neck is also carbon fiber in here as well. Fingerboard is made out of a high pressure laminate, which is also some sort of composite. Uh, the term is kind of new to, to me. I've not really been seeing that in other uh, materials for descriptions of guitar necks but it feels very smooth and very quick. Uh, the higher upper fret axis is wonderful because you really have a wonderful neck joint up there. And overall, it's got uh, plenty of access all the way through. Uh, the scale length is 25 inches. It's got 20 very nicely polished frets on there. Uh, the tuners are a closed back affair. However, they're kind of sloppy mechanically. I'll give some B-roll. Uh, when I was tuning this guitar up after I got out of the box, it felt like they were kind of like the, they were kind of it was like felt like tires slipping on ice. I couldn't get it to, you know, catch. It would catch a little bit, then it would drop a little bit. And upon a little further inspection, I'll show you the the plastic bushing that goes between the tuner's body and the actual key on a couple of the strings appears to be, they appear to be cracked, and one of them is actually missing uh, a portion of that little that little bushing. So it kind of, it still tunes up, it just doesn't, it's not real smooth. And that's, that's nothing, it's, that's something, not something Donner designed, it's just a, a part fail. They had picked out a, uh, a relatively inexpensive tuner to do the job. And unfortunately, inexpensive sometimes means cheap in a certain way. And that's kind of what happened. It, a cheap tuner broke. And that's, what so that's how that worked out.
The bridge is also carbon fiber and it's a compensated saddle for proper intonation. Uh, the nut seems to be also a composite. It's very well cut. And uh, the short headstock design uh, really makes this kind of a candidate for, for a good travel guitar. However, it comes in a soft shell case and it's a little, with all the extra padding, it's a little bigger than what I would call travel friendly. It will fit in the overhead bin of an airplane, but it's, we're gonna, I'm gonna get to the travel aspect of this instrument a little further down the road. But it's not bad. It's just small enough. It, it's for 25 scale. It, it's not really big and ungainly. And definitely, they've done some aesthetics to get that, uh, get this to be a little bit more, uh, not as as gain, ungainly as maybe a, a dreadnought or even a larger size uh, acoustic. But it, it definitely has a great sound. I just plugged in an IK studio mic just to have in the room. I didn't happen to have a boom mic stand, unfortunately, so I couldn't get it close to the sound hole, but I did what I could. Uh, but overall, it's pretty good. But there are some other issues. Uh, this test instrument, when arrived, was completely unplayable. Uh, the action was way too high. And I, I it was it was beyond ridiculous. So what I decided to do is I said, let's take a look, see if there's any shims or anything going on underneath the bridge and I did took all the strings off found out there were two shims underneath the bridge saddle and uh, removing those helped and I also figured out during this is that the bridge saddle itself is kind of tapered it's not you if you pull the bridge saddle out you're only going to put you can only put it back the correct way it's got a, a, a small taper to it so you can't put it in uh, reversed so that's one thing that you can keep in mind so if you do have to remove the bridge and you're like, oh, which way does it go? It only slides in one way. They That was a really great design feature that they kept in mind. Uh, so removing those shims helped. I restrung it, uh, but they still had a really good back bow going on. And uh, the truss rod has is held in place with a little, a little magnet area. So what I did was I removed it, and then I realized the truss rod was completely loose, not even engaged, no tension on it at all. So uh, I would say about maybe a, uh, at least almost three quarters of a turn, it it tightened up and it it's the neck went right to where you want for relief or at least what i like for relief is very flat and uh that was really great because uh with the included allowance they gave it was able to set up it was a little disheartening to have to go through and get this instrument and set it up that way it's kind of a bit of a bummer to have to do that uh but so for the playability, the neck shape is super comfortable. That satin finish is really nice. Uh, it's got nice traction for you on the neck. It feels really good and natural, which is kind of unusual for carbon fiber. Uh, the fretboard is very slick, very smooth, it's, and, and extremely modern feeling. And it really doesn't fight the player in any way when you're, you're getting around with it. It's great for chords. Uh, you know, you play lead bits. You know, it's it's really great to play. It doesn't feel like you're fighting it. There, you know, sometimes you get an acoustic, you hear it, and you go, "Okay, it's all right." Kind of, fun. it sounds okay. We start playing leads and stuff, and it just it doesn't carry or it doesn't have that extra weight to it. And this does, which is wonderful. So it kind of goes against the one of the things critics always throw out against carbon fiber. They're always saying it's lacking too warmth and it's too brittle. It's There is a little bit of that to it. It's got a little bit of a high-end sheen to it, but there's still plenty of bottom end and some warm, proje warm projection. Uh, and it maintains a lot of definition with those chords and it's it's very snappy and very responsive when you play, you know, you play lead melody lines. So it's, it's wonderful at that level. 
So it's not going to compete against the Dreadnought with big boominess or a, a large size Gibson, but it's not that. It's a whole different guitar at that point, and it's kind of, it's it's not one of those instruments. But what this does, it does quite well. But there is a head scratcher on it. There's no electronics. There's no way to plug anything into. And for such a modern instrument, that's with and the reason you pick carbon fiber is it's travel friendly. So you can take it from you know, from Maine in the middle of January when it might be super cold and dry and then maybe go down to Louisiana where it might be, you know, 80 degrees and humid and you're not going to run into any issues for stability like you would with a, with a wooden instrument that will, you know, deals with the environment of the moisture and the temperature all the time. So it makes you kind of wonder, well, you made a carbon fiber guitar meant for travel. Well, Touring musicians travel all the time, and touring musicians need stable instruments that don't that that are really impervious or really resistant to the temperature changes they're going to deal with on the road. And you know, stability for an instrument's a must at this point. But if you're also a traveling musician, you need to be able to plug this into something so other people can hear you. So to not have any kind of electronics in here, it just kind of it's odd. And yeah, it's great for travel. If you don't need to gig or plug into a PA system, it, that'll do the trick. I mean, it, but it just seems like there's a missed opportunity here, especially for something like this. If you look at Donner's website, uh, their media will show people playing these guitars in natural environments. They show them playing on a field and show them playing in the woods. And I, I kind of get that to a degree too, but this is also like... A pretty hefty sized instrument and I'm not sure if I'd want to go backpacking or camping and hauling this around even in the hard, soft shell case because it's still pretty bulky to a degree and it's something that would be another thing if you had to carry but this is not something else I'd, you know extra stuff I'd want to have to hike up a hill with at that point um, there are travel guitars that are smaller and there are travel guitars that are made out of carbon fiber and they are smaller and some of these Carbon fiber travel guitars have electronics available in them ready, already. And, you know, th yeah, those prices are higher than the $5.99 price that Donner's offering this guitar for. But if Donner could figure out how to get an electronics package in here for about $200, it would still be below the market price of what else is out there. And it would be a game changer. And it's a nice, you know, nice, simple acoustic that's really stable otherwise. And I mean, I'm, like I said, maybe if you you know, travel from, you know, an area like, let's say, you, you know, there's a student that lives in Florida but goes to school in Arizona and comes home for holidays and breaks. Yeah, this would be, this is not going to have any problem when you, you know, get it, bring it off the plane or you take it on the road. It'll, it'll, it, it'll stand up to that type of temperature changes that you're going to run into on that. But it seems for five ninety nine and for all this technology, it's kind of a lot to, for, you know, to, to kind of wrap your head around for that benefit because a lot of other players might just grab an acoustic that's actually really good and fairly stable because it doesn't mean that you know the environment's going to totally ruin an acoustic it just means this is going to probably stand up a lot better but a lot of those other acoustics may already have electronics in them so you can do a gig at your your, your local coffee shop when you come home for a break or when you go back to college you can jam with your friends at, at school and plug into the PA or up an acoustic, uh, acoustic guitar amp so, you know, it's kind of, it, it does the trick. It's a very, it, let's say it's a very simple, nice, easy sounding acoustic that is going to really be, uh, you know, resistant to all the weather and temperature changes. Uh, but the other things, you know, you might, you're not going to run into the issues that you're going to run into with an acoustic, a traditional wood acoustic guitar to a certain degree. But it's kind of like really... You gotta really kind of debate that whether you, if it's something for what you're looking for. It's not a bad playing guitar. It's not a bad sounding guitar, but it that does wrap. I do, I do kind of scratch my head on that one. And the other aspect is these guitars are generally available via mail order only. I believe these are available through Amazon primarily. I think there's some other uh, other companies that you can get these from. And if you buy one of these from there, if you don't know how to do a setup and you run into the same problem that I had where the action was super high. And you don't know how to deal with uh, setting up an acoustic or setting up a guitar in any way. 
this may be kind of a disappointment, especially if you get out of the box, you're like, yeah, I'm going to play. And then you're like, no, nah, I got to take it to somebody to sort it out. And some sometimes if you can take it to a technician to sort it out, that's one thing. They usually will go through it and they'll take care of you. But if you bring this to like a local music store, there's nothing worse than uh, bring a instrument that you bought from another retailer to them to set up, especially if they sell a similar kind of instrument where they sell something that is comparable. I've done that before. Uh, I got a guitar from uh, a major retailer and I just needed to have something fixed real quick and I brought it to a local music store and they were not very friendly because they they were like, hey, you know, you should just bring return this guitar and we'll, we'll give you a deal on a better, we have a better guitar, we can give you a deal on it if you return this one back to where you got it from. And, that happens, and there are some music stores that really kind of take uh, they take cause with that. And I do think that's something that they're not really wrong. And sometimes that you know, getting the service you need for something like this, it can kind of be a little awkward to br to bring in a guitar that you bought from some other place and have them fix it. They it, sometimes it rubs you know small shops the wrong wrong way, and that in their mind it's taking away a business that they could have and offer to you. So it, that's something. You got to keep in mind, but once you get that all set up and you get it set up properly, it plays really well. It's modern. It feels great. Uh, the price at five ninety nine, it, it it's got a lot going for it. It's not a bad playing guitar. It just it's and for the, all the modern, all the modern features and the feel and everything is great. It's just missing that one modern thing that would make it a total killer instrument. Is again that electronics package because you can take it on the road, gig with it. I, I don't know if you could actually uh, install an aftermarket one on here. I don't know how the best way to install the uh, volume and tone controls. I don't know the best. I don't know how this bridge would react if you put a under the saddle pickup in there. Uh, I would not like to be drilling holes into this carbon fiber material because there's really not a lot of patching that you can really do with like wood. You can kind of fill holes with. Uh, other pieces of wood and grain filler and putty and whatever you got in there to, to, to do that. But this is one of those ones that it's, uh, it's kind of a tough one it, to, I don't know if, and I also, you know, the cost of doing it, depending on the cost of the preamp and depending on the cost of the install, it could get closer to one of those acoustic guitars uh, that are, that's carbon fiber and has an electronics package that's already installed and designed for it. So you're not hodgepodging an instrument here. But it's uh, it's very unique. It sounds wonderful. I, I you know I really wish it had an, uh, like I said I really wish it had electronics. I would be gigging with this with my cover band. Uh, yeah, someone could say oh you put a, a mic on a lavalier mic or something. Yeah, I'm worried about feedback and external noise. I mean there's a whole bunch of things you could do, but you got to kind of figure out if this is really for you. It is extremely stable and very cool. Uh, it is a, definitely an alternative to uh, you know the traditional organic. Uh, acoustic guitar so very cool you know overall like i said unique design great playing wonderful sounding uh the cons i will say the uh, the tuners the ones that we have are pretty much you know they're not that great uh they definitely should these ones will probably have to get replaced at some point in the future uh and the setup was really absolutely atrocious and it just beg and it, and it begs for electronics so it's kind of it's a mixed bag. You'd have to really sit down with this and see if this is something that would really be fit for what you're doing. If you're not gigging out and playing live and you don't need a plug in, this could be a great instrument for you that you don't have to ever mess with truss rods or anything like that once you get it set up. So that's the big thing. So well worth it. Kind of interesting. Uh, you know, I think to check, I think it's well worth it to check out and see if this is something for you, especially where they're available on, like I think from Amazon and such. Uh, if you got it, you can try it. If you know how to do a quick setup and mess with the truss rod and get the action right, yeah, you might want to try it out and give it a go. And if you don't like it, well, you can always send it back to Amazon as far as that goes. You can give it, you know, it's not really like, uh, you know, they have free returns. So you can try it out pretty much risk-free to a certain degree with like 30 days. So always give that a go. But anyways, that's what I'd say. It's, uh, it's, it's good. It's, it's not, it's close but not close enough. And I would say that if they had it just a little bit closer or a way to make this, uh, like I said, this would be a really a good game changer of a, a live guitar for myself, especially where I do a lot of acoustic gigs. And uh, I do them all year round in the winter and in the summer. And you know, 
know, this past year the weather's been nuts. So this has been this is this has actually been one of the very few guitars I've had around for a while and hasn't had any issues going forward. So you know, when, once I get it all set up, it's sitting where it's supposed to. Anyways, that's my review. If you get a chance, check it out. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below so you can uh, do your own research and see what you think of it. Thanks. Take care. Bye. -bye.